and bam welcome back to nando talk my fellow fins fans football fans thank you for tuning into the 100th episode of nando talk we're at 350 subscribers thank you for that and i am pumped it is aloha friday some good vibes the dolphins play the ravens i am pumped and that's why we're doing a week two pumped up preview just so many things uh we're one and oh i just got to the 100th video so many things to celebrate so many things to get cheered up about so without further ado we're gonna do a little nando talk friday ramble so strap in grab a brew tune in and enjoy because i'm gonna gonna go off once again and so we start the Miami Dolphins are going to M&T Bank Stadium to take on the Baltimore Ravens. Amidst all this little noise all week we've heard about the offense not being ready, about complaining and yada, yada, yada. The fact of the matter is the Dolphins are 1-0, the Ravens are 1-0, and we play a great game on Sunday. Our first road game, Mike McDaniel's second game as the head coach, and we're going to see how he can take it on the road. Once again, the Dolphins get to take advantage of a, t- of a slightly banged up Baltimore Ravens they're still debating whether J.K. Dobbins is going to play. You know, last year, last week they deployed the little combination of Kenyon Drake and Mike Davis. A little bit of a committee, nothing scary. If we can shut down that run game and just focus on Lamar, that's going to be massive, massive, massive for the game plan and should make them a little bit more one-dimensional. But the biggest mismatch that we have to take advantage on is, of this banged-up Ravens is the fact that their secondary is a mess right now. They still have phenomenal phenomenal safeties in Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton but corner wise you know Marcus Peters is coming back from that ACL injury he is going to be a little slow a little sluggish if he does play on Sunday it's going to be his first football action in over a year we'll see if he can hang up to par you know asking someone to come back a little out of shape when they've got to run and keep up with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle is no fun test so it'll be a fun time for us Dolphins fans to hopefully see our our wide receivers start to tear up those Ravens corners because they also lost Kyle Fuller out for the season injury. Always a shame, but Hey, we move on. It's not my dolphins. You know, they also are going to be oof. Marlon Humphrey. Who's supposed to be their cornerback. One who's been holding up, holding it down since, you know, Marcus Peters went down last year and all the injuries, you know, the last year and this year, Marlon Humphrey's been the cornerback one there. He's a fine corner, but he himself is also a tad banged up. So if they've got Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters banged up a bit or just Marlon Humphrey, wow, oh, wow. We're talking about a depleted secondary, depleted cornerback room that the Dolphins have to take advantage of. Yes, Tua Tungvaluwa threw for 270 yards, a touchdown, and no interceptions, no turnovers last week, but we have to improve, and we will improve. I believe that the Dolphins, this is the week that the offense starts firing all cylinders. Last week against the Patriots, it was a nice time for the Dolphins to be able to awaken that defense and show that we're ready to rock. Now the offense has to follow suit. And originally the Ravens had a stronger secondary than I than, it, than we're coming in on Sunday, but those injuries have depleted them a bit. It sapped a bit of their strength, and we have to take advantage of that. If the Dolphins don't, it could be in for a long day, but – if we let Tyree Kill and Jan Waddle cook early, whether it's on deep routes, crossing routes, letting them go short and just absolutely do the dirty work, it's going to be nice to see the Dolphins start to develop. Because if Tyree Kill and Jan Waddle get involved early, then they'll be forced to commit more attention to them. And then we'll finally get to see mismatches from Mike Gusecki. He only had a target on the catch last week. I have to believe he's going to get involved more. This is the type of week where, hey, if there's mismatches to be have, let Gusecki exploit them. If it's not going to be Big Mike, let it be through Cedric Wilson, or if Eric Zuccone gets activated, let it be through him. Cedric Wilson should be getting some nice reps. He's a great wide receiver three. He was making some plays last week, and hey, if he's got to fill in more, I'm down for it. Let him exploit those mismatches that Waddle and Hill are going to cause. You know, whether you're game planning it for him or whether you elevate River Craycraft again, whether it's Craycraft, Sherfield, as Zuccone, to compliment Wilson, you keep that wide receiver three roll fresh and you just keep rotating whoever fits the best play at that given moment and you're going to watch them feast and eat alive because Waddle and Hill are going to demand that much attention finally. You know, I'm hoping, I was saying we get over 300 yards. I was predicting a little 312 yards, three TDs for Tua. That'd be a fun day, a TD each for Waddle and Hill to finally get them more involved in this offense. I mean, Waddle did score last week, but let's get Hill his first touchdown as a Dolphin too. That'd be electric for the Baltimore beatdown. That's going to be the real key of this game. Can the Dolphins exploit a depleted secondary that's dealing with injuries, that's keeping players off the field, and that's keeping players a little hampered on the field as well? 
if Tyreek Hill and Waddle can do that for us, if Tua Man can pick them apart, the Dolphins are good to rock because, hey, we'll be good on the passing end. Offensive line, though, it's the first matter of this, honestly. I, I don't even know how I, I glossed past that. But as, as much as I want to see the passing game improve, and I was about to touch on, on how you know the rushing game seemed a little stagnant last week, and I want to see Edmonds and Mostert run better because they caught balls in space well and were able to make some work. But the offensive line needed to improve run blocking. Well, they showed admirably last week in pass blocking as well. But now there's a little bit of injuries to contend with. And as much as we've talked about the Ravens being banged up, and I'm going to have to talk about this offensive line issue in a separate video because – Tron Armstead's a little banged up. I think it's just a toe. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go for Sunday. It was very scary when he went down briefly, but I'm hoping he's fine. The part that's really going to suck and why I'm going to need a separate video is that Austin Jackson was just put on IR literally right before I was recording this. Um, but, hey, we, 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 we chugged through. I'll make a separate IR video for Austin Jackson. That means he's going to be out for four weeks. It's the ankle issue. Coach said it was close, but they didn't want it to be lingering. So they put him on IR just so they can put him on the shelf, let him recover, and then come back healthy. Unfortunately, that means our depth right now is a little bit thin. Right now, we only have seven offensive linemen on the roster, so we're going to have to elevate someone, most likely Larnell Coleman. But who's going to fill the offensive line? I'm hoping Tron Armstead's healthy, so then it'll be Armstead, Eichenberg, Williams, Hunt, and then Greg Little probably a right tackle. Um, he also got a tad banked up. I think he's ready to go. If we call up Coleman, there's even a chance we see Coleman slide in a tackle, which I, I don't want to see anyone go from practice squad to starting blindside tackle. That'd be freaking terrifying, especially if that's a four-game commitment. But we'll see how they shake shake around. There's a chance that Eichenberg swat, slides out to right tackle and they put in may, maybe like a guy like Robert Jones at, at guard. We'll see how they decide to play around with it. I trust Applebaum to make this best decision. If the pass blocking holds up, we should be good to rock. And like I said, we'll get those passing yards and the TDs that we've been waiting for. We'll see the run gate open up a little more. But as much as I had just previously, like two minutes ago, said that the, the key to winning this game is going to be exploiting that secondary, none of that is possible if the O-line doesn't hold up. So I'm hoping for some help. I'm hoping Applebaum has planned for this and knows, hey, one tackle down means this is how we rock the offensive line and he's ready to format it. And we're good to go, and they practice this, and it's a non-issue. If they can hold up against pressure, it'll be nice to see. They do have Kalais Campbell. They've got Yannick. You know, they've got great interior defensive linemen, great pass rushers. I don't want to see Tua run for his life again. There is a chance he might have to. If 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 the O line's not holding up, get back those checkdowns. Let Edmonds and Mostert work in space. Give it to Edmonds. Give it to Hill and Waddle close to the line of scrimmage, and let them take off. Adjust the game plan. I have confidence in Mike Mandino to do so. Regardless, this week against the Ravens is how we'll be able to judge what this offensive line is going to look like for the next four weeks without Austin Jackson. A little terrifying, but hey, we'll be good to rock because this is pumped up preview. We're good. The Dolphins, I still think, have a good shot to beat the Ravens. I, anyone who is saying that this is a luck guaranteed is kidding themselves, even with the injuries, as positive as I am. I do not think this is a guaranteed lock. You know, positivity only extends so far into the realm of reality. But at the end of the day, I do think the Dolphins have a decent shot of pulling out with the win. Thankfully, I mean, not thankfully, you don't ever root for injuries. But fortunately for the Dolphins, in terms of football, they are facing a slightly banged up team. And if they can take advantage of that and steal a win on the road, that'll be massive. It'll put us up at 2-0 and in great position. I don't know if we have what it takes to beat the Bills next week, especially with a bit of a banged up O-line. But we'll have to see how that rolls. But hey, if we can contend with the Ravens, I'm confident that we can keep up our offense to keep up with the Bills. On the defensive side of the ball, you know, our secondary looked great against the Patriots. Our entire defense looked phenomenal. We we shut down the Patriots 17 is there on the first half. Granted, that is a Patriots team that is running out with a terrible QB and maxed out Jones. You know, yes, Mac Jones, the same guy who keeps losing to the Dolphins, but oh well. Um, you're kidding yourself if you think he's any good. But so I, I get that kind of point actually detracts a little bit that maybe the Dolphins defense is a little quote unquote overhyped than what they are right now. I think it's fair to say we should gauge our expectations more on the Ravens game. If our Dolphins defense comes ready to play and is effectively containing the, the Ravens explosive offense, I'm down for it. And it means we've got a legit team. 
Last week, it seemed to be the Dolphins' problem was mainly in run stopping, which is a bit concerning when you're facing Lamar Jackson. But I'm hoping our linebackers are up to the challenge and can shut him down. Jan Phillips was asked to drop a lot into coverage last week. I'm hoping he's attacking the QB more, helping contain and giving Lamar Jackson a little bit of a fit. You know, he does have the athleticism to chase him down. It's a big man with the big long arms, good reach, help him pull Lamar down. Brandon Jones, Javon Holland had phenomenal, phenomenal nights, phenomenal, phenomenal Sundays last week. Good to see them keep up from a great, strong season last year. Javon Holland is well on his way to that all pro that we've all been talking about. He had an interception commanding the defense, the green dot. I think that in Baltimore, it's up to, it's up to him once again to get after the QB, to, dis, to distract him, whether he's dropping into blitz, dropping into coverage, not letting him know. And a big part of that will be thanks to Brandon Jones, who had an insane game. We've talked about it all week. 11 tackles, six of them for solo. There was a forced fumble on the sack he got and a pass deflection. Brandon Jones was all over the field, everywhere. I've talked about his great camp. I've talked about how this third-year guy is, is one of the guys from the 2020 draft class who's taking that year three leap. This man, this safety out of Texas is Bond. I love Brits Beast Brandon Jones, and he is going to keep feasting. Let him keep eating. He's been a little bit interchangeable with Javon Holland, and it massively helps our defenses disguising which safety is going to blitz, which one's going to drop into coverage. If they're both going to go after the QB, if they're both going to go drop back, it creates a bunch of nightmares, a lot of havoc. And hey, we're good to rock. They know how to can they know how to stop the pass and they can get after the quarterback and disrupt in the backfield. B U T full. It's going to be massive for the for the Baltimore game plan. That's the key on defense to win. Honestly, another maybe surprise, you know, a little surprise that could happen. And shout out to King of Finland on. Uh, King of Finland on Twitter, you know, it was an interesting point. What if we didn't play Channing Tindall last week because we wanted to keep no game film on him so we can unleash this QB spy monster on Lamar Jackson, which would be awesome. He did say, you know, it's probably unlikely. And I agree. It is more of a, just a shot in the dark. But hey, if uh, I've been saying I've been pounding the table for Channing Tindall to be the guy who takes the Dolphins to the next one. You know, who lets us have that athletic middle linebacker who's rangy, blocking, it, stopping everything all along the field, and using that athleticism to stop the QBs is the first step. If we got Channing Tindall to be a pure QB spy to go after freaking Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen, and later on the season, guys like Fields and Aaron Rodgers, dude, I'm with it. Channing Tindall, six foot two, 230 pound monster, runs a 447. If anyone can be a QB spy, specialist it's going to be that man he's freaking athletic he's freaking scary and let's see this freak freak okay i want to see him unleashed against lamar jackson i definitely think he can be useful in containing lamar if he can get after him if he can rile up some feathers hey lamar jackson watch out you got some monsters coming out after you it'll be up to tyndall and baker a combination of them i think to help slow down lamar with phillips and ingram also getting off the edge and helping contain but you stop lamar they don't have the receivers to keep up especially with our secondary. You know, Xavier Howard is phenomenal. We've already talked about Brandon Jones and Javon Hahn. Nick Needham, he was playing a little bit more outside last week and it wasn't going too well for him. But you put him back on the inside and he's good to rock. You let him man the slot and Nick Needham will take off because we've got Darth Cater. <laughs> Hell yeah, we did a little Star Wars impersonation. A little lame, but it's good to rock because this is all on the one take. Darth Cater my God, you excited me to the point that I felt like a little kid watching Star Wars once again. Oh, baby. Darth Cater had a phenomenal game, maximizing his snaps to the most of his efficiency. We've talked about the fact that if Sam Addison and Patrick Tame were to give a cornerback to anyone starting outside of X and Nick Needham, that stamp of approval, hey, you're the starter. Hey, we're trusting you. That was definitely going to swell up their confidence. And we saw it with Darth Cater. When he got them reps, he did not disappoint. He was physical. He was not letting any balls past him. He was even forced to fumble. This kid, I loved what I saw from him, undrafted free agent. And if he can keep developing, I hope he gets a start for week two. It's not exactly like they had the greatest receivers in the world. After Rashad Bateman, Devin DuVernay doesn't really scare me. We, they do have Mark Andrews, but we'll probably put Xavier Howard, who's a freaking phenomenal monster, and he's too good to put on Rashad Bateman, honestly. I'd rather either put him on Mark Andrews or just let Eric Rowe, if he's up to challenging up another great tight end like he normally can, let Rowe stop the tight end. Let X absolutely lock up Rashad Bateman, and Lamar will have no choice but to just try to run 
And as we talked about it, the game plan will be to stop that anyways. So we're good to rock. I am confident in this Dolphins team. Darth Cater, keep balling. Needham is going to bounce back. Xavier Howard is going to keep being X. And our young safety duo of Brandon Jones and Javon Holland are going to keep showing people that they deserve to be one of, if not the best young safety tandem in the NFL. Bam, bam, bam. We're good to go. I want to see a complete game from the Dolphins on both sides of the field. If we can get some full composure from the Dolphins, if we can get everybody firing on all cylinders, we'll be good to rock. This is a massive test for the Dolphins. We talked about the Patriots being a game where we expected to win, which is why I was happy when we won, and I want to enjoy victory Monday. But, hey, people had other plans. They wanted to complain. It's fine, but that was an expected win. This now is a good is a good game, a great test. You know, we already had Mike McDaniel testing against Bill Belichick. Now he gets to test against John Harbaugh. Uh, this is another great football line, another great respected play, another great respected franchise. If McDaniel can hold it up against the Ravens, get what he wants to be done, we're going to be in for some great, great football. And I'm excited to see this next step two, episode two, week two of the Mike McDaniel era. Let me know what you guys think. If I'm just, you know full of crud if i'm just talking out of my butt if hey you won't see me get too mad i'll be you know i'm not gonna be flipping my flippers out here i'm a, always a good time always some positive vibes it's this is not the most in-depth analysis this is at the end of the day the ravens still have not fully declared their injuries nor have the dolphins besides that austin jackson news i just wanted to pump us up a bit and let us know that we can win you know we can beat the freaking ravens this is a team where we have opportunities on every single side of the ball every single position or group can take advantage of some weaknesses that the baltimore ravens present if the dolphins can do this ooh, baby i think it's going to be a bit of a closer game than i had originally said you know i had wanted like a little 27 10 on the live stream yesterday but realistically we're going to have to go a bit closer if the o-line is not there i think we'll go a little 24 10 get a little tighter but we'll still win handedly because this is pumped up Friday, Aloha Friday, a good vibes. Tua Tonga Vailoa, 312 yards, three TDs. The Dolphins' D-line will finally get it chugging. Hopefully, we'll get some four sacks. We only had two last week, and we'll start getting more pressure. I think we're still going to get two turnovers, a pick, and a fumble. It's going to be a nice time. I want to see 100 yards from our running back room. Hey, I expect a lot, but I'm a positive dude, so I think it'll all happen. If you're still listening to this somehow, please like comment but most importantly subscribe like i said we just got to 350 subscribers this is the 100th episode it's sick thank you so much to everybody who supported and listened and followed up i'm going to be having a little twofer for the people i'll be putting the link to the second video right here i think but i'm dropping it right after this one it'll be a little austin jackson ir and how we're going to be looking at the o-line much shorter but still fun and then hey i'll try to post tomorrow but for sure be having a little pre game day preview on sunday that i hope you enjoy bins up subscribe to nando talk but most importantly i hope the dolphins go 2-0 and let's beat the ravens bam